Hallelujah. God has much more for you. But how much are you willing to give to him? Hallelujah. Huh? Come on, ask your neighbor, say neighbor. God has so much for you. How much are you willing to give to him? Come on now. Hallelujah. Those who are willing to give it all, for Jesus will gain it all. Ah. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Somebody praise him in here. Somebody give God a real praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hey. My God. What if you give it all? What will the Lord do? If you have given him so little, he has done so much. What if you give him all? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Those who give all will know that double portion that God has in store for them. Those who keep holding back will always be wondering what if they did and what if it did. Come on, somebody. But the Lord don't want it to be no wonderland. Uh, Life and word that is declaring to you. It's not some fantasy. It's not some pie in the sky. It's real. Hello, somebody. And we base our faith on those real promises that God made to his word. And knowing the integrity of the God who we serve, he will always. Huh? He will always keep his word. Come on, somebody. Huh? And is it he worthy of the praise? Is it he worthy of the glory? Somebody praise him in here. I don't hear your praising yet. You sound like you're farming. Hallelujah! 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 Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah! Hey! Ah! Come on, somebody! He has so much in store for you. I said he has so much in store for you. He says those that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion which shall not be removed but abided forever though the earth be shaken and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea they shall not be moved. They shall be like trees planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in the seas. The leaves shall not wither and whatsoever they do, it will prosper. But the Lord said, the ungodly are not so. They are like the chaff that the wind drive it away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous why for the lord know it come on somebody i said the lord know it 
the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly oh my god shall surely perish and the lord is saying i put two part before you hallelujah choose he this day whom you will serve hello somebody i place life and death before you choose life that you might live come on somebody he wants you to have life and have it more abundantly but you cannot have this life without him you are not intended to live life without christ come on somebody and i hear a lot of persons say they want to live their life my life my life my life but when that life is about to suck out of their body my god then they want to talk about the lord now huh but when we're talking to them about the lord when they're in full health and strength they said no that will slow down the show that will damn the parade that will put a dampening on the party and the live up lifestyle. And they say, no, we ain't in for that. They want to live life their way. Singing songs like Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. But there is one way. One truth. And one life. And he is Christ the Lord. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Come on, somebody. In the Old Testament, he was known as the word of God. Every time the prophet came to declare a word, the prophet said, the word of the Lord came to me. The word of the Lord, what? Came to me and said so he said the word of the lord that came to them speak oh come on somebody but in the new testament the word of god is declared as jesus the word that became flesh and dwell among us and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth Come on, somebody. And John was here to declare that one, to reveal the light, to be a witness to the light, the light that lights every man that comes into the world. Come on. And without that light, men live in darkness. And there are creatures that are assigned to darkness and outer darkness that will devour men without him. And so though you might look around and look like it's just you and some friends. There are other creatures around us. Oh Lord of mercy. There are what? Other creatures around us. That are not seen so plainly. As we see humans. Animals and reptiles and insects. And other physical beings. But there are spiritual beings around us. Come on now. And, there, and not all spiritual beings around us mean us good. Hello, somebody. Some spiritual beings around us mean our destruction. And is set and that to destroy us from start to finish. Come on. But the Lord says the angels of the Lord encamped round about who? Everybody, no, around them that fear him, huh? And he's there to encamp around them to deliver them huh, from those spirits that are assigned to destroy them. Come on, and the word of God declared that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who fear the Lord hate sin. 
and those who hate sin love righteousness and those who love righteousness love to please the Lord because they know the Lord is righteous and everything he tell them to do will be right and everything God has told us to do has been commanded to us through his word and it empowered in us and instilled in us through his Holy Spirit and he's saying these three operate as one come on now first John 5 verse 7 says there are three that be a record in heaven three that be a witness in heaven it's the Father the Word and the Holy Spirit and these three are one come on somebody these three are one come on now for the father declared the word and the word hallelujah has summoned and released God's instructions and the instructions are confirmed and established by his Holy Spirit come on somebody and he wants you to know the truth but many trying to know the truth without the spirit of truth and you can hear some instructions that are truthfully stated but if you don't know the context on which the statements are made and don't know the tone nor the nature of the one who spoke come on now then you can misunderstand the statement come on likewise you can misunderstand the word if you don't have the holy spirit to guide you through the word and paul spoke about that and said what we are declaring is not the wisdom of men oh my god what we are declaring is the wisdom of god and those who understand that the wisdom of God is not like mere men would know that if it is difficult at times to understand men then how much more difficult will it be to understand God and so he says the natural man oh my God the natural man cannot understand these things of God hello he needs supernatural help he needs spiritual help why because they are spiritually discerned come on now huh first corinthians 2 verse 13 to 14 paul says these things we also speak we also what speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches there is a level that men teach on but he says though we are in human body the word we carry is not from human oh my god the word we carry is from god and he says for you to receive this word oh come on god to his spirit got to assist you you by yourself can't know it come on it will not make sense to you because God's thoughts are higher than your thoughts huh? and if you want to understand him you need his help come on now and through his Holy Spirit he offers this help to you he says these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches but which what the holy spirit teaches who teaches the holy spirit teaches he says those are the words we are using as the holy spirit gives us the unction hallelujah to declare these words to you he says if you rely and submit 
to the Holy Spirit. He will help you. Not just to hear. Come on. But empower you to obey. And through obedience, new life will be formed in you. And one that is pleasing before God, that he will declare, yes, well done. And said, yes, you are indeed his child. Come on. So he says, then it is the Holy Spirit which teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, come on, does not receive the things of the spirit look at that the natural man what does not receive the things of the spirit why for they are foolishness to him to him it doesn't make sense ah come on when you try to explain the human body as complicated as it is in its structure hallelujah and makeup that it was taken from the dust who else could tell us that this body was taken from the dust come on now Man's wisdom doesn't teach such things. They would say that's foolishness. Look on human flesh. How can flesh with all nerves and tenures and tissues and blood cells and organs come from dust? But if you don't believe the word of God, <laughs> then you end up like many of them who start to make up in their mind where we come from till they end up say you come from monkey come on now and they can't tell where the monkey come from and where the first cell come from that farm fight to reach to every monkey huh and how comes no more monkey now change Come on. So because they refuse the word, they also are exempted. They are also left without the spirit to bring them into truth. Because you can't know the depth are no in a way of fellowshiping and becoming one with the truth without the spirit of truth can i talk to somebody you see you got to understand it's more than just receiving information ah come on because jesus says i am the way the truth and the life come on so truth is more than some information given. He's referred to the person. Hallelujah. Who is the word of God. Jesus prayed for his disciples in John 17 verse 17. And said, Father, sanctify them by your truth. For your word, your word is truth can i talk to you then he says in hebrews 10 uh, hebrews 10 verse 13 that by one sacrifice huh hebrews 10 verse 14 by one offering he has perfected forever those who are what being sanctified come on now Huh? He said in Hebrews 10, in Hebrews 2 verse 10, praise God, that the, he who has come, he is the one who sanctifies 
and the one who sanctifies and the ones who are being sanctified are all one Hebrews 10 Hebrews 2 verse 10 and 11 yes he says for it is fitting for him for whom are all things and by whom are all things that's the word that's Christ in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain to make who the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings for both he who sanctifies that's Christ that's the word he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified that's us the church are all one for which reason he's not ashamed to call them brethren come on somebody huh? in Ephesians hallelujah 5 verse 25 to 27 this is described as the church and Christ like a husband and wife come on he says husbands love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and what did Christ do for the church gave himself for her why did he gave himself for her verse 26 that he might sanctify look at it that he might what sanctify and cleanse her how with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself how a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that she should be holy oh come on now and without blemish oh come on somebody now they said no perfect church in in the world hello but the lord saying something different here because he said who is sanctified come on now he justify and who he justify he glorify come on somebody so he's not just having us as company and say look at the sanctified one but he says who he has called is sanctifying them he himself is doing it he is the word and it's the word that sanctifies hello come on somebody is the word that what what separates us the people of God from the world is the word of God and the spirit of God come on now the word gives us a different line of instructions and the spirit gives us a different mode to carry it out come on now gives us new desires and passions to do what the word says because some believe as long as they do what the word tell them as long as they obey the word they're safe long as I obey the word I safe nothing else to do but play uh-huh huh so they play otherwise but they say yes but when the Lord tell me to do something I do it but what they doing otherwise huh talk to me now so if just obeying it that you obey what the word say when the word tell you to do something that make you safe let's look at something here in Mark chapter 1 Mark chapter 1 what is that verse 27 Mark chapter 1 Jesus was there talking to a man who was demon possessed come on huh in verse 26 and 27 says when the unclean spirit well give me a little earlier than that get better conversation there Matthew, Mark 1 verse 23, yes. There was a man in their synagogue. Where was he? In the synagogue with an unclean spirit. You would think, so, no, 
The man with unclean spirit, he out that door, so you have to go on highways and Bibles go find him. No, Jesus find this one in the synagogue. Place of worship. Yes. And he says, in their synagogue with what? An unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, let us alone. So if we say, let us alone, is more than one in there. <laughs> what have we to do with you? Jesus of Nazareth, did you come to destroy us? I know who you are. Huh? The Holy One of God. But what did Jesus say? Speak on. Let the people hear the truth about who I am through you. No, Jesus don't want us to hear from every spirit. Come on. Because what did Jesus say? Jesus rebuked him and said, be quiet or shut up and come out of him. Come on. Huh? Now they say they can listen to anybody and learn from anybody. But Jesus, the truth, never tell them that. Come on now. He says, by their fruit, you know, they must know who you listen to. And he says, when the unclean spirit had what? Convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice. What did he do? He came out in a look, follow, look at verse 27. He says, then they were all amazed. So that they questioned among themselves saying, what is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority, he commands evil unclean spirits, and they obey him. So though the unclean spirits obey him, when he tell them come out, they see it. Since you say all you need to do, you just obey God and you're good. Let me tell you, you're amongst the demon them. Since you say it's just obey, you obey him. Come on. Because remember, even unclean spirits obey him. Lord of mercy. Even what? Unclean spirits obey him. And that don't make them clean. That does not make them holy. That does not make them saved. Come on, somebody. So that's why we said to you, it's not just obeying the instruction, but gaining the spirit to empower you in the mode of how to carry out that instruction. These spirits did not leave willingly in submission to the Lord. They were forced out. And that's why it's called cast out. Means that they were forcibly removed. But even being forcibly removed, they still obeyed. Come on. Come on now. If a man back up at the door at gunpoint and say, open the door. Come on now. Give me what you have in your purse. Come on now. He's taking it from you forcibly. But is you up here to give it to him? Is you up here to open the door? Hello, somebody. I want to talk to you. I say, what? Is you obey him to open the door? Otherwise, the door couldn't open. They would have to break in the door. You, know, so you have the keys and he said, open the door. And you open it. 
Now so, and he said, give me the money in the bag. You open your bag and give it to him. Come on now. And he said, take up that up there, and give me a go. Take it up and give it to him. Then you know there will be him. Come on. So because you obey him, he's your master. He's your lord. No. I just are talking to you. I want you to understand this thing. Because some got this thing messed up. That's why they think that they cannot be the lord. In some things the lord tell them to do and other things that they do in God. We wink at it because nobody not perfect. But they're living like demons. Unclean spirits mix up. They are not just obeying what the Lord tell them to do. <laughs> they are also obeying what the devil tell them to do. Can I talk to you? They are not just obeying what the Lord tell them to do. They are also obeying what the devil tell them to do. So they are not willing and obedient to the Lord. This is not a means of submission. They are subjected to the power. Huh? Because of the power he demonstrates, they have to bow. But they are not doing so out of worship to him. And God is looking for true worshipers. Those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Oh, come on, somebody. Anybody forced in a corner and want to spear something that they believe valuable, we show some obedience and compliance. But that don't mean they submit it to you. Come on, somebody. A lot of people will, will bow down and behave very meek and quiet and humble to you as long as they're in a squeeze that they need you to help them out. But that don't mean you are their friends. And Jesus said, you are my friends. If you do whatever, did he say whatever? Whatever I command you to do. And that ain't no sometime service. Hello, somebody. True worshipers don't worship the Lord on Saturday or on Sunday. True worshipers worship the Lord all the time. And they don't have to sing, sing and clap and, and play with music to worship. Because their heart is set and pleasing God. Oh, whether they're at home, whether they're on the road, at work, at school, at church, on vacation, their minds always set. Oh, come on, somebody. Everything they're doing, they're thinking, how can I please God in this? What does the Lord have me to do here? What does he want to do through me? Lord, I'm available to you. And somebody will cry out and say, Lord, use me. Come on, somebody. God is looking for such that will worship him in spirit and in truth. This ain't no part-time job. This is not putting on no church hat. And when you take it off, you become a different person. No, he said this is a full-time job. This is a lifestyle. This is not something you go from nine to five. And not talk to me after six. No, this is something that is calling us. God is calling us to a relationship with him. And when you love somebody, you know, love them sometime. It's not you love me, you love me not. She loved me, she loved me not. God, not in that one. 
God not in no part time love. He's looking for those who will love him for life. Come on, somebody. And those who will love him forever they have not stayed it to give him some part time service. I heard one was on the TV complaining about some heretic pastor who was there telling the people, say, you can't give the, people, give the Lord this, you must give the Lord that, and they tell the people how much must give. And I said, that's not your business, my boss. What you must do is teach them to love the Lord. Because any time they love the Lord, you know, if it ask them, uh, what you say? Anytime you have to keep on a big bag, you have to beg big for your woman figure you or something. How you that big big your man figure you or something? You know say. I know you. You is not it. Hello, somebody. Because I don't know nobody but say, me love you with my heart. And you can't get no, no time packet. Hello. I don't know none. Not one. I've not, that nobody not break the record yet. Hello, somebody. So, because I know the first thing happens when you love, you want to give. And you will give anything to gain what you love. Come on, somebody. So we knew that we had loved idols and loved things and people that were not God. And we gave our best risk or even our lives at doing things for them. Come on now. Things that could have taken us a long time. Run some risk. Hello, somebody. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Hey. Run, in their own some risk. Eh? And they, and they say be safe. Drive, but be safe, but you know, say any drive. But that never safe. And after this was done, you have to pray to the Lord, say, Lord, make sure me don't get a ticket. Ah, parable. Yeah. Make sure me don't get a ticket from the doctor, say. Huh? Hallelujah. But the word of <laughs> you know I hear the word. The word of God is calling us to a new life. Not so. So things that we used to do recklessly, carelessly, all for the satisfying the flesh and evil desires of our heart. We turn to the Lord now to say, make me. Over, Lord. Get into my heart. Take out the heart of stone. And give me a heart of flesh. And if God never do that with some away. As bad as they say the world is now. They ain't couldn't live here. If God never put that church in the land. Appear devil all over the world. And he said he will build his church. And the gates of hell. Come on now. Shall not prevail against it. Gates is not gate like we got gate offense. He's talking about the rulers. Gatekeepers and rulers are, are rulers, those who are in authority and power. He said, those strongholds, spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness, huh? spiritual hosts of wickedness, who dwell in a high place, heavenly place. He said, those spirits are militating against your welfare, conspiring, plotting, conniving. Come on, for your downfall, that you can stand up the talk. Nice and calm with somebody and two twos argument create. And you have to wonder how oh, argument coming at that. Because you don't realize that though you're talking and them listening, them hearing some other voice. Uh, Sometimes you don't even realize that some other voice did it. 
Can you tell him, say, no, man, I just want hearing. You ain't any to listen to me, man. Your ears in they work. You ain't they listen to me, say, but even when they listen to you, who he was listening to to hear? Your voice says something what you never say. And your voice they hear, you know. And if they hear your voice says something where you know, say, who say it? You see what I'm talking about? So, so all the time them ruckus there. Those kind of things that go on on the earth between men and, and nations and they never knew identified what was happening why some people born so disciplined in a some disciplined home like the man who said I was born a disciplined child never knew I would have get so well what making it so well so all the miracles all the signs and the wonders done in the old testament you will check the book and realize is when jesus come on the scene you know then you'll find demons were being cast out of people you know i have no testimony of that in the old testament in the Old Testament, you have dead rays. You have sick get healed. Lepros get cleansed. Blind see. Come on. Miracles are there like that. Supernatural abundance of provision. That manifests. The woman with a little oil and flour. Come on. So we, we know those happen like what Jesus did in you. But not casting out demons. I want you to understand some from that. So I say, demons were occupying people unaware to them that those spirits were there. They thought that is just some mistake. It's certain things what they do me, me, me behave so. It's some mistake because they don't understand why me behave like that, but it was me. But when the word came, the word is quick. And it is powerful and it is sharper than any two edged sword. And it says, it get between bone and marrow. Huh? Between bone and joints, joints and marrow. And it's a divider. Division of soul and spirit. It starts to get between soul and spirit and expose some things. That were there. Hello, somebody. So that's why you see Jesus could be in his synagogue reading the word with the people in his hometown. In Luke chapter 4. And when he read the word, as was his custom to do, in verse 18, and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has what? Anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. And to proclaim what? The acceptable year of the Lord. The people worship God. They glorify God. Come on. But then when he said to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. That worship crowd quickly turned into a mob. Come on now. Spirits start to be exposed. That though they dare singing Hosanna, Hosanna, and quoting and declaring all the word there, when the Lord declares, No, it's time for this to be fulfilled, and God has chosen me to bring you into this. They say, No, honor you. Come on now. It's not you. We know your brothers, we know your sister. 
We know your mother and your father. You grew up from us. Why you take such a high position? That not for you. Come on. Hello. And Jesus saw their contempt for him in their eyes. Spirits rising up to say, who do you think you are? Is this not Joseph's son? And Jesus said to them, you will surely say this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. In other words, he knew what they rejected. They would soon turn to put to death. Come on. Because that's the point they'll be saying that physician, heal yourself. Whatever we heard you done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. Hello. That's why was it Nathaniel who said nothing good? Is anything good come from Nazareth? Search the scripture and see if any prophet come from there. Because of the contempt they have towards those who the Lord has chosen to bring them into his glory. The captain of their salvation. Hallelujah. The one who was counted fitting. Hello. By the Lord. Sanctified and chosen. But they rejected him. And the stones which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. What they rejected now put them out at a spot where what they're trying to finish, they can't finish it. They're left with an unfinished house. Come on. And it's going to be a mockery to many who forsake who the Lord has sent. Huh? Reject and forsake. Choosing to choose what they say, another road. Another path. But Jesus said, anyone that come to me, I am the door. Those who come by me shall go in and go out. And find pasture. But those that enter by the window. Or any other way. Will be treated like a thief. They are going to lose everything they gain. Because they reject who the Lord has sent. In his name. Come on. And the Lord said to them. You will no longer see me. Until you say. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Come on. Because those who believe in God, believe in whom he has sent. Oh my God. Huh? I said those who believe in God, believe in whom he has sent. And they can correct them. Huh? Huh? He can correct them because whatever misconceptions they had, God is sending that one to bring clarification. That they can accurately live and declare the word of truth. The word of the kingdom. Of God's sovereign rule within their lives. But they are still defiant, resistant, Rebellious. Huh? Still choosing to do it their way. Ah. Come on, somebody. And now, crisis, point of crisis is coming upon them. And they're recognizing he's the one with the answer. Because anytime they hear the report from him, my God, something inside always stirs up and they know who else 
could it be to do such things? Come on. But in stubbornness, they refuse to comply with the Holy Spirit. How will you know truth without the spirit of truth? You cannot. Come on. You may be able to quote some things that truth said. Just like Satan quoted some things that were written to Jesus. That were said by the Lord. Huh? Come on. And he said, man, isn't it written? He shall give his angels charge over you. To bear you up in their wings. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus didn't say that was not written. Nor did he say that was not declared as truth. But the devil quoted it. Hallelujah. But quoting it to use it for a wrong purpose. He's saying because there's such protection. Jump off the pinnacle of the temple. Because you have angelic protection. And the Lord didn't say. Scripture didn't promise and declare. The word didn't declare that there's angelic protection for God's people. But the Lord says it is also written. In other words, there's more to it than that. And some believe they got it already. They don't want to hear no more. Huh? Just like that devil. Come on now. The Lord says, it is also written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Or you shall not put the Lord to the test. Come on, somebody. And that is saying that because there is angelic protection, doesn't mean you should see danger. Throw yourself in it and say, the angels will protect me. That's not the instruction at all. The word didn't instruct you to do no such thing. While some will read the scripture and say, hey, the scripture says we shall, the fire shall not kindle upon us. We shall go through the fire and it shall not kindle upon us. Walk through many waters, it shall not overtake us. Go in many waters and we shall not drown. Come on now. Huh? So some believe that their faith of them walk into fire. Light coals of fire. Spread it along the ground. And saying those who come in the faith must walk through it. Barefoot. And if they don't walk through the end, they lack faith. Because they must walk through and not get burned. Who gave them that idea? That was not the word. That was the devil. Because he can twist things from the word. And gives you false communication and instruction. Come on. So if you lack the aid of the Holy Spirit. You know what you're going to become. Come on now. The Lord by the Holy Spirit chose King Saul. And the word of God says when he came up, when Samuel prophesied over King Saul and sent him on his way, he told him, say, you're going to meet some prophets while they're going by. And when he was going by and meet those prophets, the word of God said, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. And from that day, he was a different man. From that day, what? Is the spirit of the Lord that came upon him. That made him a different man. But what happened when the spirit of the Lord left him? Oh my God. He was ready to even kill his son. Ready to kill the champion of Israel that saved his kingdom from the Philistine. Goliath. 
the warrior. Ready to kill David. Come on now. Because he became a different man after the spirit left him. And even worse than he was before. Come on now. Then if you play with the Lord. If the Holy Spirit leave you, what you think going to happen to you? David saw first hand. Huh? David saw first hand what a king looked like when the Spirit of God left him. And he could not stay with that king. He had to flee from him. Because that king even sought to kill him. Throwing javelin and spear at him. Come on. And David recognized he could not stay. Even though he's staying to help him. He would lose his life in doing so. Because that king had turned against him. So when David sinned. That's why David cried out. In Psalm 51. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Come on. Because a person can start out so sweet in the Lord, but when the Holy Spirit leave you, You might as well be dead. Come on, somebody. Because when the Holy Spirit leave you, that's what it, Paul is speaking about in Romans 1, verse 18 to 31. He said, God gave them up to their own reptobate mind to do those things that are not fitting Come on, somebody. To what? My God. To do those things that are not fitting. Come on. They exchange even the natural use. My God. Of their bodies for things that were contrary. My God. To its purpose. Hello. There is honor. Their bodies among themselves who exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. And he says, For this reason, God gave them up. God, what? Gave them up to vile passions. Why you think, says some person, were so hot? And fire for the Lord. And now they're running down the world. They keep promising to come back. But all now. They keep promising to change. But all now. Come on somebody. Because they were stubborn. Set in their ways. To grieve the Holy Spirit. Then to quench the Holy Spirit. Then to resist the Holy Spirit. Then to even lie against the Holy Spirit. And at a certain point God gave them over. Hello somebody. So all who are talking about the Lord will never give up on you. Stay there about the Lord who never give up on you. You need to read this Romans 1 verse 18 to 31 and tell me what it means when you say the Lord gave them up. Come on. You talk about it not leaving you. You want to see what happened? Because the word of God said the spirit of the Lord left King Saul and went upon David. Come on. Left him. And when he left him, evil spirits flood him. Come on. 
And he became worse than he ever was before he even knew his calling. Hello? Do you ever want to become like that? No one in their right mind would say they want that to happen to them. But if they live like all these men lived, that the Spirit of God left them, the Spirit of God turned against them, what do you think is going to happen to you? God is no respecter of persons, God is not partial. Come on. And if you choose to take that path that incurs such judgment, you think God will overlook it and say, oh, it's you. You can't go on. You must cease from sin. You must heed the voice of the Lord. You must embrace the righteousness that comes from God through Christ. All playing around is grievous to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit didn't come to condone you, your sinful lifestyle. He come that you might be holy as the Lord is holy. But he said, but if you resist, quench, resist and grieve the Holy Spirit, and go forward then to even lie. The Holy Spirit tell you to do this and the Holy Spirit tell you to that. That he never told you to do. Or saying the Holy Spirit never told you to do that. When the Holy Spirit specifically told you. Don't do that. And you did it and say I didn't know. Lying on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will leave you. What I say. What I say, the Holy Spirit will leave you. And David had that fear where he cried out, Take not your Holy Spirit from me. I wonder when I see how some Christians living today, are they aware? That God that gave his Holy Spirit to them can take him away from them. Are they aware that the Lord can take him back? Come on somebody. But they have allowed the enemy that old devil that old deceiver to convince them God will never do that. Just like the people God gave them this temple. Had his servant built it and they were in the temple. They felt safety in the temple of God. So no matter how they sinned they would say the temple, the temple, the temple. <laughs> and they felt that was sufficient to declare their love for the temple they would somehow absolve them from all the sins they committed. Come on. Because they go in the temple. And the Lord was there telling them, not one stone going to live on this. It's going to be destroyed. You put your hope in the temple. But he says not that temple saving you. You should put your hope in the Lord. And if you put your hope in the Lord, you would obey him. You would serve him with all your heart. What you say? You would not give him some half-hearted service and hope it's enough. Because it looked good to the masses. He says those who serve him Truly serve him. He knows. Come on now. Huh? This is not about knowing right from wrong. Let me get every fool you up. 
The things say people who go to hell, going to hell because they don't know right from wrong. Use a special case. They're not going to hell because they don't know right from wrong. They're going there because they didn't do what the Lord tell them to do. They wanted to live on their terms. And anyone who's truly approved by God don't live by their terms. They live by God's terms. They don't set the rules. God does. Come on. So all who seek to live their life their way, they're going to see where their way lead them to. I'm patiently sitting and waiting. Because I tell them all the while, I am not living here because of, I'm living my way. Because my way, you won't see me here. We are on some other rendezvous. Something that please flesh and appetite and desire. But the Lord said, uh -uh. here is the way. Not a way among many ways. That I can choose one and you have one different one. No, he said, here is the way. Walk in it. Also. Right, so if you don't walk in it, you think you're going to be saved? <laughs> ah, Jesus. Come on, somebody. I say, if you don't walk in it, you think you're going to be saved? Not at all. He is the way, the truth, and the life. It's not a religion. It's Christ. And Christ is still the head of the church. Whoa. Come on. And those who are of God, they love the word of God. They love the people of God. They love the house of God. They love the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, anyone, lack like anyone of absent out of those four pillars are backsliding. They love the house of God. They love the people of God. They love the word of God. They love the Holy Spirit. Come on. And anyone trying to vary from one and say, but I have two. I might have two or four or three or four. They're failing. Because your love for the Lord is shown in the love for the brothers in the house of God. It's not love for the world. When he says, whatsoever you do to the least of these, that these, those these won't be the world. It will be those, he says, who are my brethren. The least of my brethren. Jesus' brethren is not the world. His brethren are those who are in the faith, walking in true holiness and righteousness in God. Come on. Huh? But many mix up. Anyway, they can get something, they're gone. But you better know who you're serving. Hello? God the Lord says, Who you serve that is of his own soul, you are being rewarded for it. He's not rewarding you for serving the world. <laughs> Come on. God, he said the world is passing away. Hello? And all of his loss with it. Come on. And all the passions and desires fade away with it. So all who living for what fading away, go and fade away with it. But those who are living for what is eternal will live forever. That's what is called eternal life. Come on. And I ask you today, who are you serving? Many would jump up and say, the Lord. 
But examine carefully. Examine carefully your position. Come on, stand with me. You're going to pray. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift those hands to the Lord. Glory to God. Father, we thank you that you have brought us to a place to hear your word. Many hear and it did not profit them for they did not mix it with faith. You says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. Hearing by the word. Those who hear and mix the word with faith will see the results of the word manifested in their lives. Glory of Christ manifested in them. We don't make any more excuses for not doing what you call us to do. Your Holy Spirit has been given to empower us not to obey you sometime but to have a dwelling in us that we obey you at all times that you order our steps by your word that our lives are directed led by the Holy Spirit for you said for as many as are led by the Holy Spirit these are the children of God we submit to you, Lord. Come on, somebody. We humble ourselves before you. And say, have your own way. Wherever we have resisted, wherever we have been stubborn, have shown resentment, self-will, selfish ambitions, clouded our judgment. Open our eyes to see the wonders of your kingdom. Let the glory of the Lord rise within us. Raise up a standard against the enemy now. As we lay it all down at your feet. Come on, somebody. Right now. See. Dispatch your angelic host with flaming sword to war over your people. Cut off everything that is not of you. And let grace and favor surround us like a shield. Raise us up to new levels of fellowship and communion with you to your word and your Holy Spirit. Elevate us in the spiritual realm now, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Higher. Higher, Jesus. Above all Things that have been blocking our vision, blocking our hearing, blocking our reception to the truth, to the spirit of truth operating in our lives. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth. As it is done in heaven. Unveil your glory. Within us. And around us. And cause us to know. Hallelujah. The fullness of your spirit. In us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on somebody. Worship him in the house. Worship him. Let him raise you to that place. Let him magnify his name in you. 
Let him break those shackles. Let him release you from that bondage. Let him remove the scales from your eyes. Let him connect you to the real source. Hallelujah. Of your salvation. Of your life. Of his glory. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, hey. Yes, Lord. Come on, worship him in the house. Come on, talk to him right where you are right now. Pour out your heart before him. Let him in. Let him in. Leave no stone unturned. Ah. Let him do a clean sweep through your heart. Let him plow up your heart through his word and his Holy Spirit. And fertilize and strengthen those things that he has determined for you in Christ. Come on, come on, come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Waves of anointing over your life right now. Waves of anointing. Waves of anointing. From heaven to your soul. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Wash, Lord. Cleanse. Say we are made clean by the words you have spoken to us. It's your word sanctify and cleanse now. In the name of Jesus. Purify our hearts. Enrich our soul with your spirit. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him, somebody. God is doing a new thing. Come on. Open up your heart to him. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. I hear chains falling. Hallelujah. I hear shackles breaking up. Ah, padlocks flying. Because God is releasing you. He's releasing into you. Into new life. Eternal life. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh glory, glory, glory. Pour it on Lord God. Like golden oil. Sweet anointing from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Clothe us, mantle us with your glory. Let the darkness submit to God. Be banished from our presence. And let your glorious light shine through us and around us for all the world to see. Come on, come on, somebody. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise, church. Give him the praise. Yes, Lord, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy, Jesus. In all of this, we give you honor and glory. The rising of the sun till it's going down. Be magnified, O great King. Hallelujah! 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 Hey! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. Come on, somebody praise him in the house. 
Come on, somebody give the Lord the praise. Glory to God. Isn't he awesome? Isn't he wonderful? Hallelujah. Who can save like the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Time to release you. Praise God. You just have four or five minutes left. Give you a chance to sow as the Lord has laid upon your heart and then release you to this place. If some have done that already, but while those others are doing so, hallelujah, we say the final word to those who are watching online. Praise God. Those who are watching online and watching Increase in Faith Deliverance Ministries International. We are 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan, declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. I want you to know the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. The word of God says, if you abide in my word, hallelujah, Jesus said, if you abide in my word, hallelujah, you, then you are truly my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And he said, how oh, can we be free? We are already free. We are children of Abraham. And Jesus said, anyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever. But a son abides forever. And if the son set you free, you are not temporarily free or partially free. He said, you are free in Indeed. Come on. Hallelujah. We wanted to embrace that truth that the word of God will ma be magnified in your life. Come on. Hallelujah. We have a book we released here before last year. It's called The Gospel of the Kingdom, subtitled The Gospel of Jesus Preach. You can get it online. Just go in on Amazon.com in the search box. Type Richard V. Fagan, and the book will come up. And of course, you can order it anywhere around the world to Amazon.com. And also, you can also check out more teachings from us at the church. I'm going to send a friend's request to Richard B. Fagan on Facebook. You'll be seeing our five live stream services that are streamed on Facebook each week. And we also edit it and put more scripture to it on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to Apostle Richard Fagan. You'll see we added more scripture there for you to be more bold and sound in your teaching because you don't know who will hear it from your mouth that will be saved who will question what you know and you need to know and have more knowledge in the things of God to answer them hallelujah and that will be a sure word that will bring salvation to those who truly hear and heed the word of the Lord amen praise God if you want to know more about us check out our website it's increasing faith intl.org that's our website increasing faith intl.org those who desire to sow to the ministry can sow to the website of course those who want to write a praise report or prayer request can write in the comment box there we are glad to hear from you and also those who have been checking us out and want to connect with the visions or plans we have there that are stated on the site we are sure to welcome you on board Whatever the Lord tell you to do, we encourage you to do it. We are here forcing forward in faith. Hallelujah. We know that God has enabled us for victory. And those who have connected with us have been seeing victory breaking forth in their life. And many are looking for ministry to connect with that are truly declaring the word of God without fear or favor and not compromising the word. And believe me, this is one of them. Hallelujah. We know many are there that are not. That say the same thing but the Holy Spirit will bear witness with your spirit that it is if you ask him he is the one who leads you into all truth amen praise God hallelujah we also have a love gift for those who have been watching the program and want things that are teaching them daily in the word we have something called our daily devotional we released last year hallelujah from the 1st of January to the 31st of January monthly editions placed in ebook form that can be sent to you by whatsapp on your number all you need to be requested by the number on the scene the number on the screen is 
876-525-6757. Looking forward to hear from you and to build your most holy faith in the Lord. Until next time, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Praise God. You blessed today. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a praise, man. Hallelujah. He deserves all the glory. Thank you for coming and for sharing with us in this time of worship and teaching in the word and for those who also done so online thank you for taking the time to join us we pray that the word will enrich your soul and your life and by the power of the holy spirit you will see that word being manifested become flesh in your life that you will truly live in the ways that please god and, and qualify for ones that are deemed ears to his kingdom and join ears with christ amen praise god so keep it in prayer and keep forward in faith as we walk by faith and not by sight we'll see greater victory and uncover greater mysteries in the gospel amen praise god may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord have his countenance upon you and give you his peace god bless you have a great day in the lord Bless you all. In Jesus' name.